In the year 1808, Napoleon, Emperor of the French, was at the height of his power. He had near complete control of continental Europe. His great nemesis was the British Empire. In order to bring them to heel, he instituted his continental blockade against them to strangle their trade. Portugal was openly flaunting his order to cease trading, and so he invaded Spain to bring them to heel. To avoid capture, the Portuguese royal family relocated their court to their most prosperous colony, Brazil. The city of Rio de Janeiro became the capital of the Portuguese empire, including all its possessions in Africa and Asia. The ruling king at the time was Dom João VI, who returned to Portugal. His son, Dom Pedro I, stayed in Brazil. The Brazilian elite at the time were unhappy with Brazil's colonial status, and to solve that problem, Dom Pedro decided to declare independence on September 7, 1822. A few months later, he was crowned Dom Pedro I, Emperor of Brazil. In the early morning of 2nd of December, 1825, the court at Rio de Janeiro awoke to the thunder of salvos from the fortresses and ships in the bay. At 2.30 a.m., the heir apparent had been born, also named Pedro, who would be the center of all hopes of the nation. All his life, he would be surrounded by a mystical aura, the result of a concept of divine monarchy inherited from medieval Europe. The excesses of Dom Pedro I forced him to abdicate his throne in 1831 by the Brazilian elite. He then returned to Portugal. He left his young son behind with his two sisters. Thus began the regency of Dom Pedro II. His nine years of regency were turbulent, with rebellions breaking out around the country. Dom Pedro II had a lonely childhood with no friends of his age. He was always surrounded by servants who would only speak if he spoke to them first. He could only see his sisters after dinner for an hour. The Brazilian elites began discussing bringing forward Pedro's accession, beginning in 1835, but he ascended to the throne at just age 16 in 1841. The emperor was acclaimed, crowned and consecrated. He was named Dom Pedro II, Constitutional Emperor of Brazil by the grace of God and the unanimous acclamation of the people. The coronation celebrations went on for nine days, ending with a gala ball in the city palace. When Dom Pedro started to near 18, it became time for him to find a bride. Brazil being so distant and exotic made it a difficult task. His best match was the sister of King Ferdinand II of the Two Sicilies. Teresa Cristina Marina was a Bourbon by three of her grandparents and a Habsburg by one grandmother. Her family was not very wealthy and her dowry was modest. Fernando II of Sicily was a devout Catholic and this satisfied the requirements of Brazilian conservatives. A portrait of her was brought to Brazil and Dom Pedro had to judge it. He thought she looked favorable and accepted. Teresa Cristina faced a long journey, 80 days by ship to Brazil. Pedro met his wife on the ship and he didn't even try to hide his disappointment. He thought Teresa was small and fat and not very attractive. The emperor did his duty though and had a son who died a few days after birth and two daughters who survived into adulthood. The emperor's next task was to develop a uniquely Brazilian identity and he started to patronize the arts and sciences. Dom Pedro was himself a painter and he paid for artists to go study in Europe. It was in literature that the emperor's role was clearest. Under his direct protection, a movement grew to promote the autonomy of Brazilian literature. It was the job of the new Brazilian history to assemble a pantheon of national heroes, create a past, and search for historical continuities. If Brazil had no medieval castles, ancient temples, or heroic battles to recall, it had the biggest river in the world and the most beautiful flora. A good portion of Pedro's time was spent on his own studies. In his diary, he wrote, I want to divide my time in the following fashion. Get up at 6 and study Greek and Hebrew until 7. Lunch at 10, from 9 to 11 writing this book and sleeping. On Fridays, I am present at English and German lessons given to my daughters. On Tuesdays, the Lucias from 7.30 to 8 at night. Wednesdays, Latin with my daughters. Thursdays, Lucias. Sundays and holidays, readings from Lucena. Greek verbs at night. Time not otherwise employed will be given over to reading, conversation and receiving visits. 
Tensions with neighbors were reaching fever pitch, and soon the deadliest war in Latin American history would break out. In the south of Brazil, four nations, Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay, were contending for supremacy in the region. These land disputes led to what is known as the Uruguayan War, which was a civil war in Uruguay, with Brazil and Argentina supporting one faction and Paraguay supporting the other faction. The pro-Brazilian faction won the war, and it would have been claimed a success if it had not led right into the Paraguayan War and Paraguay invading Brazil. Brazil, Argentina and Uruguay declared war and dedicated themselves to ousting the Paraguayan president, Francisco Lopez. The Allies had a total population of 11 million, of whom 9.1 million were Brazilian, while Paraguay had a little over 300,000. Pedro took command and went to the front. In his diary, he wrote, The war is going well, and I hope it will not last long. I hope it will be finished by March, which will be best for Brazil. Paraguay made some early advances, but once Brazil and her allies regrouped, they took the war into Paraguayan territory, and eventually Paraguay's army was destroyed. However, this didn't end the war, as Paraguay's leader, Francisco Lopez, then turned to guerrilla warfare. As 1868 began, Dom Pedro was increasingly being blamed for the war because of his obsession that Lopez be deposed. Dom Pedro's son-in-law was appointed head of the army and was tasked with finding Lopez. On March 1st, the Brazilians finally cornered Lopez and killed him. Although Brazil had won, it came at a high price. The war cost 11 times the national budget in 1864. Even worse was the loss to Dom Pedro's reputation. He had formerly been known as a peace-loving monarch and now became known as a bellicose and inflexible ruler. He would eventually shed this image, though. Paraguay lost 60% of its population and 90% of its adult men in the war and never fully recovered. Until the 1870s, Pedro never left Brazil, and in 1871, he decided to go on his first trip abroad. The monarch left on the 25th of May, 1871, for Europe and the Middle East. His daughter, Isabel, at the age of 24, became provisional regent. His first stop was in Lisbon. Even though he refused any honors, since he said he was traveling privately, he still received the king and queen. Pedro caused a sensation in Portugal. The Portuguese could not understand a monarch who did away with royal rituals. Dom Pedro also visited the Philadelphia exhibition in the United States, which celebrated 100 years of independence of the Republic and was astonished by what he saw. He behaved like an interested scientist, looking at all the exhibits with curiosity. Among the people he met were Thomas Edison and Alexander Graham Bell, who showed him his latest invention. Asked to say something into the telephone, the emperor said, To be or not to be. The device did in fact speak, he marveled, and added, Congratulations, Mr. Bell. When your invention is put on the market, Brazil will be your first customer. In his diary, he wrote, On my journeys, all I have had time for was to make Brazil better known and to make personal contacts, which have already been useful. If I tried to show off my knowledge, it was so that people will know that in Brazil there are people more studious than I, for they have more opportunity than I. Back in Brazil, imperial prestige was rapidly declining due to Pedro's insistence that he was a mere citizen. Brazil was a society that adored rituals, and he abandoned the values dear to royal systems. By giving no attention to his image, Pedro exposed the fragility of the monarchy. Previously, social life in Rio revolved around the court, but now that wasn't the case, and groups sprang up that were critical of his majesty. Dom Pedro receded even more from public view. He took to his pastime of studying languages. He already spoke French, English, Spanish, German, and Italian. Now he decided to study Greek, Latin, Hebrew, Old Provençal, and Tupi Guarani, a local language. The process of abolition was gaining steam, but the government was trying to avoid what they feared most, a slave rebellion and agricultural chaos. In a letter to a friend in Europe, Pedro wrote, Here it has rained quite a bit. The emancipation question is progressing, 
and I hope at last to see it completed with no great upset. My children will be leaving on 5th January. My life doesn't vary. And when I go past the Miranda Chalet, you have no idea how I miss you. Brazil finally abolished slavery totally in the year 1888, freeing 700,000 slaves. Abolition had made his daughter, Isabel, who was regent at the time, popular with the masses. But the former slave owners joined the Republican cause since they were not compensated for their loss. Isabel wrote to her parents, who were then in Milan. Pedro's response was serene. We give thanks to God. Dom Pedro returned to Brazil and received a better than anticipated reception. Paradoxically, the institution of the monarch was losing its appeal in Brazil. But yet, Dom Pedro was as wildly popular as he has ever been. The Republican Party, made up mostly of farmers and members of liberal professions, put increasing amounts of pressure on the army, convincing them that the monarchy was the enemy. In November 1889, the emperor attended a ball the government was putting on for the Chilean navy on Fiscal Island. The ball has gone down in Brazilian history as the symbol of the end of the monarchy. While the imperial family enjoyed the ball, army officers were meeting at their club to plan the last details of the coup they were planning against Dom Pedro. The emperor was back in Petropolis when he received a telegram declaring the end of the monarchy. He decided to go to Rio to ascertain the situation. He found the situation was very confused and nobody was in charge. The Brazilian people were dumbfounded with no idea of what was happening. The imperial family was informed that they had 24 hours to leave the country. Dom Pedro at first didn't believe it, but eventually resigned himself to it. His Majesty wrote a letter announcing his abdication. In view of the information given me at three in the afternoon, I have decided to accede to the imperatives of the situation and live with my whole family for Europe tomorrow, leaving this dearly beloved country to which I have tried to show my love and dedication for nearly half century, in which I have fulfilled the role of head of state, leaving then with everyone in my family, the memory of Brazil will be strong in my head and I will pray for its greatness and prosperity. Later that day, the new government published the following note. Fellow citizens, the people, the army and the navy, in complete accord with the feelings of our fellow citizens in the provinces, have just decreed the overthrow of the imperial dynasty and, in consequence, the extinction of the representative monarchical system. The emperor sailed to Lisbon, sealing the end of the monarchy in Brazil. When he reached Portugal, the banishment was formalized. The Republican government sought to destroy Pedro's legacy. Not long after exile, Dom Pedro received another blow. On December 28, 1889, while he was visiting the Academy of Fine Arts in Porto, he was recalled urgently to his hotel where the Empress had had a heart attack. She was already dead when he arrived. Reportedly, her last words were to the Baroness of Japura, Maria Isabel, I'm dying not of sickness, but of pain and sorrow. Pedro wrote in his diary, I can hardly believe it. I always wanted to die before her. An emptiness has opened in my life that I do not know how to feel. Only a study will console me. Dom Pedro became increasingly solitary and he moved into a modest room at Hotel Bedford in Paris. Dom Pedro brought some earth from Brazil with him and in a note he said, This is my own country's earth. I desire that it be put in my coffin if I should die outside my country. He soon fell ill and on the 5th of December 1891, Emperor Dom Pedro II of Brazil passed away. Showing no sign of contempt for the country that exiled him, his last words were, May God grant me these last wishes, peace and prosperity for Brazil. <laughs>